California Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday, the 20th day of December 2023. I hope you're safe and healthy today, that your family is safe and healthy, and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, who, along with the first responders every day, are saving lives. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep our cities and streets and towns clean and disease-free. Blessings upon those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover teenagers and children who are the unfortunate victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People who are also victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, and child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses, double curses upon all the perpetrators, all the profiteers, and all the perverts that create this heinous industry. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children homeless in the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There's going to be a basketball game tonight, scheduled basketball game at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. We're going to be there uh, between the Brooklyn Nets and our New York Knicks. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game because, first of all, the Nets are coming off losers of four out of their last five. They are also just finishing a West Coast swing where they have five games on the road, Utah, Phoenix, Clippers, Kings. They had some tough road games. Same thing that the Knicks just dealt with, but they dealt with five games instead of four. And the Knicks are now finishing their five-game road trip tonight in Brooklyn, technically. So Brooklyn is one and four in their last five. They're looking for a win after having lost four straight. Um, they're a scrappy team. Uh, Jock Vaughn has them playing scrappy ball. They're missing Ben Simmons right now. Uh, because of the back injury. <clears throat> but aside from they're missing three players. Ben Simmons is probably the most important one of those three. But they'll have uh, their core of Nick Claxton, of uh, Thomas, Cam Thomas. I think they're going to have Spencer Didwitty tonight, who's also a traditional Nick killer. Uh, and, and, and I think Cam Johnson as well. So they're going to have, and Deron Sharp. They're going to have their team pretty much. They're going to be scrappy. They're going to be desperate for a win, having lost four straight. And they're now 13 and 13. You know, it's early in the season still. So I don't want to say the season is teetering. It's not, it's not that serious right now. But they do want to get back so that they can get into the playoff picture. They're on the real edge right now. Um, right now, they're about 10th in the East. But it's a tight race. Ninth or tenth is where they are, and this is a tight race between, really between four and ten. So uh, you're going to see a lot of jockeying. Nick, Knicks, meanwhile, need this win to get the 16 wins, and they got a 15-11 right now, which, I mean, um, is about where I expected them to be at this time of the year. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of haters that wouldn't have even thought the Knicks would be here. And then there were people that thought they should be they should be uh, really twenty six and zero right now, but I was about they're about where I expected them to be, um, and moving through this really hard December schedule, you know they're dealing with the Nets tonight, and then they got Milwaukee twice in the Garden next weekend uh, for Saturday at twelve ish, and then on Monday at twelve ish. So both at the Garden. Uh, that's going to be another upcoming, but we got to deal with what we got to deal with today. So today they got to get this win against Brooklyn. Now, the Knicks, as we have been seeing, have been playing terrific basketball, especially in the last game. But overall, without Mitchell Robinson, that's a huge loss uh, for the Knicks uh, to lose Mitchell Robinson. A very big loss uh, for the defensive anchor of Tom Thibodeau's defensive team. But Isaiah Hartenstein came through. Last game with 17 boards. And this is the theme that I have noticed about the Knicks this season. Because of the continuity and the depth that I've been preaching about for a while now, it could be a different player <clears throat> that comes up big every night. They got a lot of talent. Everybody that kept whining and still whining about making a trade and we need a big wing and we need a four and all this stupidness. You got a lot of depth on the Knicks. You are so deep. 
that a player like a like a, du- a Deuce McBride, who would be in the rotation if not starting for a number of teams right now, can't even get minutes because of the depth that the Knicks have. You know, so and then the whole whining about the the, the lack of length at the four. Listen, there is no team in the NBA that doesn't have a weakness. Every team has a weakness. Okay? So if you're telling me the Knicks' biggest weakness is lack of height at the four, we in good shape. Because the Hartenstein, Hart, Grimes, and IQ bench is dynamic. I mean, even when they play bad, they score 30-something points. But when they're on their game, they could go up to 50 points, you know, off the bench. So you got a good squad right there, height or no height. And then Julius Randle, just straight, you know, I was telling my man uh, uh, AA that Juju been just straight balling, period. Juju just been straight balling, man. So um, he been in his bag. And, and I thought he would be this year coming into a prime year with a second year of a, of a real superstar level point guard and Jalen Brunson and the maturity of all the other players, including RJ around him with Mitch Rob. I thought he would you know, be good. And I'm telling you right now, if he don't get hurt, he's going to be, there's going to be hell to pay for some opponent in the playoffs. So Juju been in his bag. He's built literally Julius Randle has always been built for the grind. Again, a lot of people discount the grind. They don't understand. You can have all kinds of superstar talent, but if you can't grind, like look at the Clippers, the Clippers have had Paul George and Kawhi Leonard for like two or three seasons now. And they can't get they can't get it done. Why? Because the grind causes them to miss games. Okay, talented as they are, they can't get through the eighty two game grind and be ready for the playoffs. They couldn't consistently. Maybe they can this year, but for the last two or three seasons, no, they couldn't. Because it's, there's not only the talent ability, but there's the grind ability. Juju has the talent, obviously all NBA, but he is literally. At 6'8", 250, 260, a solid muscle, dude is built for the grind, okay? Most of y'all, and myself included, in the past have been whining about his playoff performance, right? First in the first year with Tom Thibodeau, and then this past season. Well, I don't really blame him this past season because of the ankle surgery that he actually ended up having to have. So that injury was serious. He was playing on a very seriously hurt ankle. But nevertheless... Previously, we were, we had criticism about his uh, playoff performance, but you should never criticize him during the 82 because he is built for the grind. Does he trip sometimes? Does he act like he needs his meds sometimes? Yes. But even that, this season, no, he has not. Jalen Brunson is the established leader of this team, and when Juju starts to whine, it seems like Brunson is the one to tell him to be quiet, and he can Okay, RJ can't do it. Okay, none of the younger players could do it, but Brunson can. Okay, and speaking of Brunson, you know, last week, early last week, when the Knicks lost to Utah, when they beat Toronto, Brunson was a little bit off. Looked like the grind was getting to him a little bit, and you know, he's a very physical player, so he was a little banged up. I thought he should sit again. Of course, being who he is, he refused to do that. Then, of course, just came out against Phoenix and Durant and them and dropped 50. <laughs> so he's been really balling in the last three games also. And so we expect that to continue tonight in Brooklyn. So you have Juju balling, Brunson balling. But what I'm saying about the continuity and the depth is you don't never know. It could be RJ dropping 30 tonight. It could be Grimes getting five threes. It could be Hart scoring 12 points in four minutes or something like that. It could be Dante dropping 30. It could be Hartenstein getting 15 boards or any two of them. It could be IQ just taking over the game when he comes in. We have so many weapons on this team. And most people don't recognize it because these are kids that we drafted and developed that haven't been all NBA or all stars. You know, so they haven't gotten the you know the press of a Anthony Edwards, somebody like that that's also coming up, or a John Morant who just been handed the keys from his rookie year. These guys have come up in a new culture, a new system in New York, and and low key, they all dynamic. You know, and so you never know 
which one or two of them are going to pop off. So as far as Jericho Sims, speaking of somebody we drafted, we know he hurt his ankle in the last game at the tip-off. Played three minutes, couldn't continue. Um, he's listed as a game-time decision today. Uh, the Knicks did a smart thing, which we talked about. I think we talked about this on the live screen about two weeks ago, that Todd Gibson would be the guy. He was available. He is a Tibbs guy. He keeps himself in shape, as we have seen, even though he's near 40. Paying him off the bench, uh, you're going to get big dividends from that. So we, if Jericho could not go tonight, and it's really 50-50, I expect him to play. But if he can't or if he is limited in his minutes, the Knicks have picked up cheap, a guy that knows the Tibbs system, that plays defense, that's a grinder, Taj Gibson, and a vet. So you still got him, and you got Isaiah Hartenstein. Now, I don't know, because this could go a number of ways. Sims could play and start. If Sims is playing, he's starting, okay, period. Because Isaiah Hartenstein, again, most of you don't understand. In the league, if you have a dynamic bench, that can destroy other benches. And that's the key here. See, generally, your bench squad is going against another team's second unit. So when you're playing Boston and, and Tatum has to come out or Brown has to come out and you bring in your IQs and you bring in your Dantes or you bring in your Grimeses, that bench can destroy whatever the other team brings on the floor. And I'm not saying Boston in particular, but I'm just saying in general. So um, that's why you want Tibbs wants to keep IQ on the bench with Hartenstein, because when you have IQ, Hartenstein, and Hart, then you add a, uh, a, you know, a Grimes or a Deuce or Dante, you have a dynamic bench. And so what's going on now is he wants to keep that. That being the case, if Sims is available, he starts. If Sims is not available, it's a question mark because you could start Taj. You could start Taj or you could play Taj in the second unit. It depends on a couple things. Tibbs, first of all, it doesn't depend on trust because Tibbs trusts Taj Gibson, period. But it depends on how many minutes at age 38 is Taj able to give you effective minutes. And so you want to be realistic. Not everybody's like LeBron. And even LeBron, if you've seen the game against the Lakers, he was really, this is the first time that I've noticed in LeBron's career that during the course of a game, he was pacing himself. He generally doesn't do that. I mean, he's, you know, he's a physical specimen, like really something you see generationally. But uh, he was pacing himself, which means, you know, he, he's smart enough to understand he needs to conserve his energy. He's older, you know, so he can't run with all these 23-year-olds all night, but he knows how to pace himself. Well, most guys can't even do that. You just got to give them 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and, and they'll give you a high level of play in that 15 or 20 minutes. That's Taj Gibson. So now do you start him and pay him 15 minutes and then play Isaiah Hartenstein 33? I think Tiz would like to do that because if you start Hartenstein, you're going to end up maybe playing your second unit with Taj a little more than you'd like. I think Taj might start. If if Jericho can't start, Taj might start. This is a rare situation. People were calling for all kinds of players to come when Mitch went down. But it was Taj to me, and for me, main reason is not only is he in shape, he knows Tibbs' system, he plays Tibbs' defense. Very important. He's not a rim protector. You know, he plays the five. He really is a power forward, but he he plays a better five than Juju does because Juju's a really, you know, obviously all-NBA power forward. He doesn't like to play the five too much, but Taj can grind at the five if he needs to. So he might start Taj in that position. But we need to, the Knicks need to guard the perimeter. Cam Thomas can shoot the rock. There is no doubt. And he killed us one game, I don't know, I think it was last year or the year before, from three. He killed us. He just was nailing stuff just one step over the half court line. You got to guard the three-point line against him tonight. You got to guard him. Cam Johnson can shoot it as well. McCall Bridges can shoot it as well. You got to guard the three-point line today. So the Knicks, if they do that and limit dribble penetration because – you know, I mean, I, I'm not as concerned with it coming from the Nets, but they need to limit digital penetration to the paint, win the rebounding battle, um, and definitely guard the perimeter. D defensively, this is what God do. Offensively, um, move the basketball. We we need them 25 assists to keep coming, so we need to move the basketball. I'm pretty sure Juju, and this is the thing about coming to the next level as an organization and a team. 
you got a couple of guys that you know are going to bring it. And everybody in the league knows that. So Brunson and you are going to bring it tonight. I'm expecting that. They're spoiled us. That's what's going to happen. Drew's going to go for his 20 and 10. Brunson's going to be between 25 and 30. It's going to be like that. Question is, how many shots is it going to take for them to get it? But they're going to put pressure on the net. The question is, who's going to step up? Who else? And I'm very confident somebody is. It could be Grimes. It could be Deuce. No, it could be Dante. It could be IQ. It could be Hart. It could be RJ. Somebody's going to step up. We're going to be at the game. We're going to meet this afternoon. Let's see. It's about a little after 10 where I'm at. I'm, I'm in Newark, New Jersey, in a hotel right outside the airport. And um, we're going to be heading over to Manhattan. You know what happened, man? You know, I was going through the airline where they make you take your shoes off and all that. And I had a bottle of, you know, for my, for my contacts, the contact lotion. And that caused a little bit of a stir. And we got a little bit into some drama with that. And it caused me to lose my Knicks hat. So I got to go. I'm going to go to the NBA store today before we meet at the restaurant. Get me another Knicks hat. <laughs> That's what we're doing this morning. Going to be in New York City. Going to probably stop up a Starbucks and hit up a Starbucks. Go to the NBA store. Do your thing. Then go and meet my, my peoples over there. So far, we got I got my three cousins. And I think we got three other people coming inside myself. So about seven of us going to be meeting at the at the uh, Florida de Mayo on 83rd in Amsterdam about 2 o'clock. So anyway. Y'all enjoy your Wednesday. I'm certainly going to enjoy this game at Barclays. Let's get this W, Knicks Nation. Y'all enjoy. Shalom. Oh, by the way, um, for all you that come to the Bible study, obviously we would not be doing the Bible study tonight. So usually on Wednesday night I do a Bible study. We're not doing the Bible study tonight. So all of you that do the Knicks and the Bible study, let your brothers and sisters know there'll be no Bible study tonight. We'll talk to y'all soon. Shalom.